Now for our roundtable with our WPTV political analyst, Mariana Mancuso and Brian Crowley. Brian, your quick take of the week. What are you hearing, seeing, and thinking? Well, I mean, the most important development this week is the fact that we're now entering the phase in Florida and the rest of the country of reopening, with each state doing it a little bit differently. But most of the medical professionals and the epidemiologists and the scientists are concerned about, are we reopening too soon, not just in Florida, but around the rest of the country? So in a way, this is a big experiment, and we're going to find out whether or not we've done it too fast. Mariana, your quick take, top of mind. To echo the sentiments of Brian, it's the same thing. People are concerned. Out of 67 counties in Florida, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County are not opening on May 4th. And I think a lot of people are wondering if that could actually spill out to the rest of the state and if we are moving too quickly. This week, or last week, I should say, Governor DeSantis sat at the White House with President Trump, and it was President Trump's support that helped launch the governor into the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. Talk about the symbolism and the substance of the meeting as it relates to coronavirus. Mariana? It's just another example of the governor being more concerned about what the president thinks about him than being able to be in Florida and get to work for Floridians. It's really a sad state of affairs. There are people that are suffering from this pandemic, and he wants to go for various different press opportunities in the White House to tie himself with the president. And that's unfortunate for every Floridian who ever voted for him and the other ones that he continues to serve. Can't he make a fair argument that he needs to be in coordination with the White House that's having to make uh, decisions on federal guidelines? Under the 10th Amendment, he is a governor of the state of Florida, has the ability to act unilaterally and act outside of the federal government and do what's best for the Floridians that he is serving. Brian, your take on the meeting between the governor and the president and all that it means, as I said, substantively and symbolically. Well, you know, from his standpoint, I think he sees some value of making sure that Trump likes him because if Trump has any feeling at all that you're not completely on his side. He turns on you very quickly. So that would put the state at some risk. But, you know, this is a time when DeSantis should be bipartisan. It was a mistake to keep the commissioner of agriculture, a, de a Democrat, off the reopening committee. You know, at a time of crisis, it isn't about politics. It's about bringing everybody together, working on solutions and moving forward with those solutions. And, you know, to, to be that partisan is a mistake. Health considerations have been mixed with economic considerations and political considerations. Uh, we're seeing that more and more Republican governors tending to side with the White House on wanting to ease more quickly, Democratic governors not so much. Is that what you're speaking to, Brian? Um, sure. I mean, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a, there's a decades-long record of, of Republicans always looking out for the business community, and that's fine. Democrats tend to look more out for the worker and for small businesses. The, but this is a time when everybody's suffering from the same problem. And, you know, you have the irony of uh, Rick Scott, our junior senator from Florida and the former governor, voting for the billion trillion dollar uh, CARES Act and now complaining that uh, he, you know, the CARES Act isn't working. Well, why did you vote for it? And, you know, I mean, this isn't, none of this should be about politics. It should be about what's in the best interest of the American people and in Florida and what's the best interest for Floridians. We don't ask the fire department when they're putting out a fire whether or not they're Republicans or Democrats. We expect them to put out the fire. <laughs> Mariana, okay. your thoughts, same topic about how uh, inevitably in our polarized environment, health considerations and certainly the economic ones and people hurting and needing a paycheck have been blended with political considerations as well. This is not the time for partisan politics, as Brian has pointed out. This is a time that we get to work and we ensure that Floridians are protected and that they are being compensated during this difficult time. The unemployment debauchery that has happened during this entire situation has been absolutely, first of all, it was, we could have avoided all of this and we didn't. We could have made amends for it. Nikki Fried offered 40 employees to go and help kind of unwork and unravel and help with all the backlog. And DeSantis refused to take her up on that. And that tells me that he wants to turn this into a political football. And I'm telling you that this will come back to bite him when he wants to run for election because people don't forget what made their pocketbook, pocketbooks hurt in the first place. And I know we talk about it every week, but we get calls about it every day. People just want the system fixed. And the echo from this a mess and debacle, as so many on all sides of the aisle have called, it's going to reverberate all the way into fall. Brian? Oh, I, I, I think absolutely. I mean, a lot of, th here's the gamble we're, we're playing right now. If the, the people who believe opening up are correct, 
if we've seen the worst of the pandemic, uh, if the economy recovers, then that helps out the Trump and the Republicans. If they're wrong, if more people get sick, if more people die, if the economy continues to collapse, then the Republicans have been, been wrong. And, you know, it's an enormous gamble. The problem with this particular gamble is it involves people's lives. In fairness, though, uh, the Republicans would argue we've been having to write a playbook that's something that's completely out of the blue. Never had to write a playbook like this. And so we're trying to do the best to balance between economic concerns and health concerns. Do you have to give them more than a fair bit of latitude on that score? I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I have very, very close friends who own small businesses and they are suffering. They had to lay off their people. They don't know whether or not they're going to be able to reopen. Uh, uh, you know, it's 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 horrible what's going on. But and I, and I have no problem with making decisions to reopen if you're making those decisions based on the science and what medical people are saying is the is the safest thing for everybody to do. If you're simply making a political decision, then that's not acceptable. And as I said to Senator Berman in our last segment, a Miami Herald analysis suggests that less than 2% of Floridians have been tested to date. And so we're going to continue to see this tug of war. Have we done enough testing to make smart decisions about reopening? We're going to find out as we see phased in reopenings uh, around the state. Marianne, I want to put a question to you. It's not one I typically ask, but I get a lot of calls from people who ask me, said, what about the conspiracy theories? Uh, it's become a cottage industry, conspiracy theories and debunking them about the cause of the virus, alleged political machinations behind it. Uh, your take on all of that. Look, as far as conspiracy goes, we understand that the intelligence communities in this country are working very diligently to find where this all began. We also know that as a result of these conspiracy theories, they're being stoked through the flames of social media, and that is not helping the general public to have this conversation of how to move forward and to help do better and figure out how we can get everyone tested, make testing widely available, and prevent this from happening again to every American. And I think that when we hear about these conspiracy theories, what we really have to recognize is that they are just that, they're theories, and people are looking for answers. They want the reasons, they want the why, and the reality is, is it's going to take time for the intelligence agencies around this country to be able to sort all of that out and get back to us. And Brian, the conspiracy theory is seen, of course, through a polarized political prism, but your take on this, it, it's just been odd to me, some of the calls I've received from uh, people who I've said, wow, uh, that's out in the wind. Well, and I'm hearing the same thing and I'm reading the same thing. There's all kinds of conspiracies out there, including the, the idea that somehow this pandemic was started by the Democrats and it was all it's all a plot to hurt Trump. And apparently the Democrats have been so successful in this. They brought in all of Europe, most of Asia and parts of South America all to participate in the pandemic. I mean, it's silly on the face. And yet there are people who just fervently believe this kind of nonsense and you know, it's it gets to the point where it's not even worth having the discussion with them because they don't want to hear anything different. And I'm not saying that there aren't conspiracy theorists on the other side of all of this, too. Uh, but it's very hard to get everybody to sit down and use common sense and use logic. And, uh, you know, we're sort of back to Area 51. Very quickly, we only have about 30 seconds left. Brian, uh, education tsunami, superintendents around the country are saying there's a big hole in their budgets and we're gonna see that. That's gonna have a lot of ramifications in Tallahassee to come. You've covered Tallahassee for years, quick take. Florida has always had a budgeting problem when there's a time of crisis because most of our money comes from sales taxes and tourism taxes. And then of course for local government, it largely comes from property taxes. When people aren't coming here, when people aren't spending money, sales taxes disappear. We're going to wind up with a big hole in the budget. And we also, over the last 20 years, led by starting with Jeb Bush and moving forward, the Republicans have cut corporate income taxes and other corporate taxes, including this year. They cut more taxes for, for corporations. That doesn't do a lot to help the worker. We'll have to leave it there, and we'll be back with your closing comments in a moment.
Now time for the Mancuso moment. Last week, PBA students took their finals, distance learning, and faculty and staff gathered on campus at a safe social distance to bid farewell to President Fleming. After 27 years of service to PBA, he did a presidential parade and everyone stood six feet apart to say goodbye to him. And I just want to wish him well and a happy retirement. He will be truly missed on PBA's campus next fall. Mariana, thank you. And the Crowley closer. Well, I think it's time for people to consider in Florida and, and frankly around the country, but in Florida in particular, you know, the big businesses have had a lot less trouble getting the money they need than the small businesses and the workers. And maybe it's time that the Republicans look a little closer at what workers need and what small businesses need. It's very sad what's happening to them, and it shouldn't be so hard for them to get help. WPTV here to help you get through these hard times from issues and questions about bills piling up to ongoing issues with unemployment compensation. We're dedicated to helping you rebound during these difficult times. And thank you for spending time with us on today's To The Point. If you'd like to send us your comments about our broadcast, please go to WPTV.com, click on the To The Point page, and you'll have a section to send us your views. As always, wishing you and your family the best. Be safe and be well. Have a good day and a good week.